So as you know, Illustrator has a ton of tools. But our goal is always going to be to use as few tools as possible. Because the fewer tools we use, the smoother our workflow, the quicker things move along. Well, there is a wonderful thing, a glorious thing, called a bounding box. And this bounding box will allow us to not have to use the scale tool, for instance, or the rotate tool. There are times when we want to use those, but most of the time the bounding box can do the job for us. So if I click on this piece of type right here, you will see the aforementioned bounding box. So that blue line around the type, and then those little white squares on each corner and then the middle of each side. That is the bounding box. So by grabbing those handles, I can resize, I can rotate, and it also makes it very easy for me to see what is currently active within the layout. So to resize something, I can grab on a handle and I just put my cursor right over the top of one of those handles and you'll see how the icon changes from the arrow to a double arrow head. And then if I click and drag, I can resize this element up and down. Now if I hold the shift key, known as the constraining key, then that will constrain the enlargement or reduction to stay in proportion. Okay. So that's pretty groovy. Groovy. Before we move on to rotating, however, let me answer a question which many new to Illustrator have. And that is, how the heck do you delete something? I don't know. It's easy. First you have to decide what you're going to delete. Um, do I want to delete this? Uh, this? No. This. Because this is obviously totally square, man. Uh, it's an old typeface. This has all kinds of problems. It is exactly not hip. So I'm going to click on that. You see the bounding box? And then you just hit the delete key. Boom, baby. Gone. So now let me show you how to rotate. I want to ultimately combine this type with this square, but the problem is it's a square. And isn't this telling me not to be a square? It is. And I'm a very literal person, so I want to remedy that. So I would rather not have to draw another shape. I'd rather just use this shape and rotate it. And so you'll notice if you take your arrow tool and don't put it on top of the handle, but just outside of the handle, you will notice that you now get a curved double arrow head. And if you click and hold and drag, it will rotate the object. And by default, it will rotate from its center point. If you want to constrain the rotation to 45 degree angle, uh, guess what key you hold? That would be the shift key. Remember, the constraining key. Okay, so that's groovy. So many things are groovy. Very I'm going to click on my type now and then drag it into the diamond. And now I would like to move this whole thing to the middle of the page. So here's a question. So many questions, so little time. Whatever. How do I mark both things so that I can move them both at once? Yes, I could drag the diamond over, then drag the type over. But wouldn't it be easier if I could just mark both things and drag them at the same time? Well, I can. There's two easy ways to do this. I can click on one object and then hold the shift key down and click on the other object. And shift clicking allows you to mark multiple things. And I can just drag it over then. Or one of my favorite techniques is to just drag a box with your arrow tool. And as long as you're touching any part of those objects, it will mark those and then I can simply drag it to the middle of the page. Now you notice you have to drag inside an object or you will end up unmarking it. You'll also notice that I am dragging it in a straight line. Any guesses as to what key I'm holding down? 